Hello again, my friends. Welcome to Carpo's opinion, I suppose. Eventually, one day after seven years of making over 4,000 videos, I imagine I'll probably come up with a catchphrase or some sort of a, you know, a intro to my videos, but, you know, it's always something different. I change. We all change. I'd hate to get stuck with the same bullshit for seven years. I'd hate it if I'd given in to the you know, advertisement bullshit on my channel and uh, had to limit what I was saying and be careful with my content and be careful with my wording and my titles because, you know, I'd be afraid of not being able to make my revenue. It's like, this is so freeing for me. This is like my therapy, my journal, if you will. And uh, it's really helped me a lot along the way. And especially looking back at the mistakes I've made along the way in my life, and the times when I've learned that not doing anything is worse than doing the wrong thing. You know, if I'd taken more chances, you know, I maybe would have been uh, less regretful, but I generally don't have any regrets, except for recently. And it's only because the last few years, since I hurt my back after being a carpenter for years, I had really bad sciatica and I quit. And for a couple of years I didn't do much, and my I was in such pain, you know, that my brain went into a different mode of couldn't do anything. And then I started the, the Kratom business about a year and a half, two years ago now. And wow, it's, I mean, time just flies by. That's just the thing. I feel like I want to do so much more. I want to build myself up and do all these things. So I guess looking back at that, I don't really regret much. It's that I expect too much of myself, I guess. And that's another thing. That's why this is therapy. You know, by saying that, I sound silly. I'm like, I had a company and I hurt myself, so I started another company. But anyway, between that, it took some time to recover and I still go through the same shit as everyone else. I still go through the same confusing what ifs and what's life all about but I've eased back over the years and I've changed enough to where I, I don't ask really the big questions anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm content to not know most things. Uh, I just love to learn about basic science. I mean right now I'm into gut biology and bacteria and everything and um, also looking into you know pharma and writing this book on how pharmaceuticals affect us and the history of them and and some of the shit I'll never publish or do anything with but some of it you know fuck I might actually make something out of it one day and uh, <clears throat> I'm just an average dude <laughs> you know I come on and I make videos and talk about life and I sometimes have deep subjects but I'm just an average dude that doesn't always I guess I do go into the kind of the, the deep shit sometimes, a lot of the times, and it probably drives my family nuts, you know, sometimes, uh, the way we're all affected by it. Something I've learned, and this is what I'm trying to convey and share with you, is that when we go into the ether, into this other realm of our minds, it's good to bring ourselves back down to where we can be in the same frame of mind with other people. Like, our collective evolution is important, but it's also more important that we can communicate and have relationships with those around us and um, you know I really had a point when I started this video and, and it was definitely going to be geared towards the last one I made which was about the psyche um, you know who we are and whatnot um, I, I guess the message that I really especially wanted to try to get across was the original context of the video was going to be have we lost rituals in our society and how's that affected us especially as males and you know it is a genetic thing you know for <laughs> as long as we can look back through evolution I mean we we've, we've had roles to play uh, even as hunter-gatherers and men even though what masculinity is is changing uh, which is a good thing I mean it's not about how strong you are or tough you are I mean, intelligence always wins the day. Humans use their intelligence, not their, their brute. You know, work smarter, not harder is, is always the one. But the people who can't work smarter, they just take pride in working harder. And that's all they can do, and that's okay, too. We have different people who have different skills, and that's how it is. But what's masculine is changing, but also, I think in our Western society, we don't have any rites of passage, really, or rituals. This is the one thing that religion may have up on, you know, just society in general, as long if their rituals were only half decent. I, I, I mean, it's a joke, you know. I, you know, the, the whole baptism idea and all this, that's, that's not a rite of passage. Like, this tribe in 
you know, I think Africa or South America, they take these stinging ants and they weave their necks into this giant tapestry and then they put it on the person's chest and let them bite the hell out of the dude's chest. He gets all sick and you think, that is messed up. Why would you do that to a, a boy, you know, uh, just because he's 12 or whatever? You think about it and you look at all those rites of passage throughout the world, especially some of the tough ones, it gives a boy direction and... I'm not saying that that's the right way to approach anything. I'm saying that when we don't have direction, when we don't give our children too, enough guidance, then they may not know where their place is. And that's what happened to me. Of course, I lost my father when I was 15, so I never really got to uh, understand what it was to be a man. I kind of had to figure it out on my own. I mean, he liked to go out camping and do all that kind of, you know, outdoor stuff, and he was a poet, uh, but I didn't really you know, ever speak to him on that level. And it wasn't until after school that I really got into the whole philosophy shtick um, and start didn't realize it until, you know, decades later, you know. But now I'm, I'm content with who I am and understanding that I'm a product of my environment. But also, you know, my decisions and choices. Sometimes when people say, you're lucky, you know, I say, I'm not lucky at all. I go through the same hardships as anyone else, but, how, you know, never call it luck. I work my ass off like anyone else. We all just suffer in different ways, and we all pay the price in different ways. And uh, we make sacrifices for our family, for our friends, and for ourselves, and I hope we're making the right choices when we decide to say, you know, go on a vacation here and not here. You know, stupid decisions that we make every day are ultimately important to us, you know, we, and, and so we get wrapped up in the day-to-day -day life, and, and it's important to break away. It's really important to get away from the day-to-day -day bullshit, and if you're young, I would just say that you don't let your parents pressure you to do anything you don't want to do, but do realize that if they are giving you direction and they seem to be harsh, it's an angle I, I, I didn't consider as much when I was younger, that, you know, they understand a lot more than you think. Growing up without direction, without guidance, without a path, um, you may think that that's hurting a person in a direction, and sometimes it is. I mean, you'll be a doctor, you'll be a doctor. <laughs> but it's not like that. It's, it's just some parents want to help want to help their kids to achieve something greater. Um, so if your parents are pressuring you, realize that it may be stemming from that. But also, I think that we need to create a general rite of passage. This is something when I was talking to my kid earlier, I was like, isn't it crazy that, yeah, we have a ritual, we have a rite of passage. Here, have a bottle of liquor, you're 21. You know, just think about that. And this is, of course, three years after these kids have already been in the military, fought for their country. I mean, if people don't realize how absurd it is that we're not allowed to drink till we're 21, but we can go kill ourselves for the country when we're 18... Um, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's really a sad thing, you know, but that's a whole different story. That's about how the government and pharma and, uh, you know, the, the whole uh, shtick about, you know, uh, the drug war Nixon started and that failed and that Reagan continued and that this whole just say no campaign when I was a kid was complete bullshit. And so were all the rest of them. So... Here we are amidst all types of different crisis and opioid epidemic and um, a confusion epidemic among our world. We don't understand where we come from in the West or in the East for that matter. I imagine every culture is probably having the same identity crisis right now with the internet and every kid who grows up in even an ashram somewhere being able to look up on, <laughs> pull out their smartphone and look up and say, hey, wait a minute. Maybe my, what I believe isn't so true. Hey, this guy that I'm following is actually a pedophile. Or, you know, uh, my religion's caused a lot of damage in the past and I don't want to be like that. Or, why are we fighting? We believe in the same exact God. And it just goes on and on. But people close their eyes. They'd rather go to church than put church within their mind. I mean, no one ever said a person had to go to church. It was never decreed, on, in, in, as far as I know, in any of the text. It was just about you know, giving praise to the Almighty, if you will, which I call the all, I call the nature, the universe, and I do speak to the universe, and I give thanks. Uh, it's good enough, you know, it, it's good enough not having to name it or anything, but we, 
we have a, such an identity crisis that we can't even agree on what God's name is or what the universal mind is like, and we never will. And we need to get past that and realize that there are some questions that cannot be answered, and it's okay. Our feeble, little, pathetic minds cannot grasp what God might or may not be. And to think that we can fit that into a Bible or any book of any length is complete absurdity. You know, you look at you look at the Bible itself and you compare it to all of the writings of mankind and, and ask, well, what are the chances that any of these other texts as well would be divinely inspired? And who's to say that they're any more right or wrong? Who decrees what is truth and what isn't? We believe each other over our own senses. So we're born into this world, we're raised to think for ourselves, but we are so brainwashed that we believe what men or women that came before us told us rather than following our own hearts and minds. Instead of going out into the wilderness and asking, what is the truth of the universe? And not getting an answer. So we come back and ask some bishop or a pope. It's pretty absurd, but I understand people are scared. But I just like to say that it's not an excuse to think that a person only is the only one that has the right belief because it confuses the youth of today bad enough. Uh, it's it's fortunate that you know it, I would say it's unfortunate on one hand that you know religion is on the decline, but only if it was it should be replaced by something greater like an understanding in natural law, an understanding of the universe. Science is far from perfect, and religion often pits itself against science as the enemy. The truth is, science has its dogmas too. And science is very short-sighted and cannot explain the feelings that we have of the epiphanies, the amazing experiences we have. But it can light up the brain, say, on psychedelics or in meditation and say, oh, these are the regions that are active. I wonder why. And it helps us to understand better. It's just another tool. Belief or religion, faith, whatever you want to call it, that's one tool. Science is a completely separate tool, but they're not the only tools. There's our own intuition, which is based on our experiences. There's our gut feeling, which isn't just based on our experiences. Gut feeling is literally based on the bacteria within our colon and our gut, communicating with our brain and telling us what we need to eat and not eat. We don't realize. We think we're conscious of what we need to eat. And sometimes we are. Often we are. We can choose what we want. At least we think it's our choice. You know why you puke when you're nervous? Because the bacteria in your gut help expel anything that's in there, so you can save energy. Instead of digesting, you can use it for fight or flight. And uh, it also shuts down your digestive system. And so when you're in fear mode, your digestive system doesn't work properly. But that's another story altogether. Bacteria fascinate me. And uh, uh, the way that we think that we're in charge of our brains, but there's bacteria and viruses, you know, uh, like from cat crap. You know, we've got the... Uh, a variety of different things that can, you know, create lesions on our brains and, and who knows what we're really thinking and what part of our environment's thinking for us. That's, that's what science has helped us discover. And instead of that being something that's considered, you know, uh, sacrilegious or opposing religion, we should see it as a complement and helping to understand our world better instead of going back to, you know, thousands of years ago our ancient, you know, rituals and passages, rites of passage, dunking babies in water and stuff. So, anyhow, that's my video, and I will talk to you all later. I wish you the most wonderful of days, and uh, peace and love to everybody. We're all in this shit together, so take care.